Hi, everyone. Reverend Dorr here from Faith Community Church. We're now in week eight of our study, Discerning Truth from Error. We're using as a reference for this study a book by Pastor Jack Hibbs called Living in the Days of Deception. How many of you have experienced what seems to be a global fog over our culture today? A fog so thick that it's twisted and distorted the truth to the point of being unrecognizable. The spirit of the age has caused a spiritual darkness church to prevail over the minds of so many in our world today. More and more people have seemed to have lost their sense of reason and good judgment. Now, there is an explanation for this. You see, the moral compass and ethical values that once governed our way of thinking in the West has been strategically dismantled. Church, that moral compass and those ethical values were founded on Judeo-Christian principles. They were founded on God's word. Instead, the culture today, instead of listening to and adhering to these Judeo-Christian values that once built this nation, we are now reverting back to a pagan way of thinking which is sadly producing a society that is bent on glorifying bad behavior. Church, you have to understand, that's what happens when you uproot foundations. Structures crumble and fall to the ground. Decades of neglecting to preach the gospel in truth and power, the church has certainly contributed to this moral decline. In an effort to reach the world, many churches today conform to this world's way of thinking, neglecting the instructions found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, which says, <clears throat> excuse me, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Instead of genuine believers transformed by the power afforded to us when the gospel is preached correctly, we have churches today filled with people who think like the world, talk like the world, and walk like the world. And this is a sad reality in many churches today. And if that wasn't bad enough, we now live in a pagan culture that is seeking to fill this spiritual void. Church, train yourself to listen carefully to the rhetoric that's coming forth from certain political groups today. From the halls of politics, we hear politicians preaching now about morality as if they are the new bastions of moral truth and ethics. For many people today, politics has become nothing more than a new type of religion. We see this void being filled in the universities and colleges around the globe. Young people are being indoctrinated by a new moral code, one that is founded, church, on Marxist theology. Church, wake up. It's time we see what's really happening in our world today. Church, this moral code fueled by the protests and riots that we see happening on our university campuses all around the globe are intentional. 
Now you may say, oh, come on, Reverend Jordan, riots are nothing new. I grew up in the 60s. I remember, I remember Kent State. I remember when there were riots and, and protests in our universities protesting the Vietnam War. We all know that campuses have for, for generations been a hotbed for civil unrest for many, many years. So riots are nothing new. Well, beloved, that may be true. But what is new is the rise of Marxism gaining ground in seats of authority in our institutions throughout our nation. And it's this Marxism, it's this ideology, beloved, that is now fueling these uprisings at an alarming rate. From the White House to the courthouse to the schoolhouse, we have had an infiltration of those who promote Marxist ideals that are now seated in seats of authority. And all those who oppose them, they seek to bully into submission. If anyone opposes them, they are labeled as enemies. They have created a new definition of tolerance to help them accomplish their agenda. Pastor Jack writes on page 131 of his book, Today's culture believes tolerance trumps truth. In another era, you would probably say it's not possible because those two virtues go hand in hand. He goes on to say, sadly, people no longer think this way. Church, our culture has redefined the meaning of tolerance. Tolerance, a virtue that was at one time used to unite us, is now being used as a weapon to divide us. How many of you know we now live in a culture where if the definition of a word doesn't fit your narrative, that group will hijack that word and then redefine it. In his book on page 132, Pastor Jack quotes the definitions of tolerance and tolerate as written in the American Dictionary of the English Language, published in Webster in 1828. <coughs> Excuse me. It reads like this. Tolerance, the power or capacity of enduring, or the act of enduring, and tolerate is defined as to suffer, to be, or to be done without prohibition or hindrance, to allow or permit negatively by not preventing, not to restrain, as to tolerate opinions or practices. Pastor Jack writes, these definitions tell us that we are to suffer or endure someone else's belief, even if we disagree with them. He then quotes Webster's side note following its definition of tolerance. Listen, it reads like this, little used, but intolerance is in common use. Church, is this not the same human condition we see being played out in our world today? For generations, we've known the true definition of tolerance, but what human beings do is display a spirit of intolerance. What does this tell us? Church, you can try and redefine words to suit your agenda, but actions and behaviors speak louder than words. The human condition without Christ cannot be virtuous, beloved, in its sinful state. 
We need the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out. And that can only happen when one is born again. Have you ever noticed that those with the loudest voices screaming out for tolerance today are in reality some of the most intolerant people you would ever meet? It's true. So in truth, all that many in our culture today have done is just redefine intolerance by calling it tolerance. Church, you need to understand there is today a global agenda driven by the spirit of the age to silence the voice of truth. What its real goal is, is to silence the voice of God. If you have the book, Living in the Days of Deception, take a look at page 133. Look at the heading on this page. It says here, the new tolerance decides what is tolerated. Church, read that again. The new tolerance decides what is tolerated. Now tell me, is that not the definition of intolerance as we know it? Pastor Jack writes, in America, some have confused our First Amendment rights with intolerance, turning them into volatile political and social issues. Yes, the definition of intolerant, of tolerance has exerted its influence in those areas, but the equal concern are the politicians, politicians themselves who are attempting to take this revised meaning from the secular to the sacred. Church, we see this happening today. The church is being persecuted whenever she takes a biblical stance on marriage, a biblical stance on abortion, and a biblical stance on homosexuality. Pastor Jack writes, today, If a Christian says to someone, I disagree with your belief, it can be labeled a hate crime. It makes no sense that simply verbalizing Jesus loves you and wants you to go to heaven can qualify as hate speech. But sadly, in many places of the union today, it does. On page 136, Pastor Jack writes, This new tolerance dismisses absolutes. Church, when a society dismisses absolutes, lawlessness abounds. Our culture has reduced expectations in order to justify bad behavior. And we see a dramatic rise today in teen gang violence in our world as a result of this. Church, you have to understand, when you remove the safeguards of moral absolutes, you open the door to all kinds of violence and anarchy. Pastor Jack writes, this new tolerance sets the boundaries. Church, listen. If something doesn't change drastically in our country and in this world, (laughs) it will become more and more dangerous to identify as a Christian in our own nation. Political enemies want to silence the church. Enemies within the church want to silence her voice as well. Jesus gave these words to comfort his disciples in John 16, verses 32 and 33, when they were facing their persecution. He said, Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. 
In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Church, meditate on these words. Hide them in your heart. Know this, as Jesus was with his early disciples in the hour of their trial, he will be with us also. Amen. Look around you, church. New boundaries are being set every day. They want to silence us from preaching the gospel. They want to silence the voice of God on the earth. I believe many of them don't even understand the hatred that they're feeling in their hearts towards Christians and Jews. You know, it's so so interesting to, to watch them. They denounce prejudice and racism with one hand, <clears throat> only to celebrate it towards other groups with the other hand. They celebrate it, beloved, whenever it suits their bias and their agenda. Church, the level of hypocrisy that you and I are seeing today is unreal. Only a mind deluded in darkness cannot see it. As Pastor Jack writes, this new tolerance isn't loving. Church, you know, it's not our job to beat people over the head with the gospel. That is not what we're called to do. As a matter of fact, Paul taught us that we should avoid arguments. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 36, the apostle Paul tells us, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Did you catch this, brother? Did you catch this, beloved? Correcting his opponents with gentleness. This does not mean that you and I are to hold back the truth, no. But it's telling us that when we share the truth, we must do it in love. We must do it with meekness of wisdom. We must not become argumentative. Church, you know by a person's attitude what spirit they are of. Are they operating in the spirit guided by the Holy Spirit? Are they operating through their intellect and being soulish? Are they operating in their flesh and being ruled by the unregenerate part of us? You know, it's so sad to see so many Christians today on the internet, devouring one another. You know, listen, I, I have no trouble when a minister of the gospel feels led to call out heresy. I have no problem with that. We are to call out heresy. But when these podcasters, church, start joking and mocking about the very people that they are saying are in error, they're not reflecting God's image to a lost and dying world. I have a problem with that. You see, they become no different than those that they are uh, accusing of promoting this new definition of tolerance, which isn't loving. And the world is watching, church. Our attitudes and our demeanor matters, not just the words we speak, but how 
we speak them. Calling out sin, church, isn't unloving. I'm going to say that again. Calling out sin is not unloving. It is actually the most loving thing we as Christians could do to those lost in their sin. The most important thing to remember, church, is that we are called to be reflectors of Christ's image by showing them compassion and concern. Paul teaches us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. You see, church, our motive in calling out sin should always be to see people restored, to see others delivered, and to set captives free. Can I get an amen? True tolerance, Jack Hibbs writes, shows others a better way. One of the things Pastor Jack points out in his, in this chapter is how many people accuse the Bible of not being inclusive. And you know what, beloved? As Pastor Jack writes, the truth is, in some ways, it is not. In some ways, it is very exclusive. Now, I know some people really struggle hearing that, but let me explain. Church, the gospel is for all men. The gospel is for all women. The gospel is for every boy and every girl. Salvation is available to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But there is a fellowship. There is a union that only those born again of Christ's spirit share. That fellowship, beloved, is called koinonia. First John chapter 1 verse 7 tells us, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The Bible calls this fellowship of the saints the church. But it is not the heart of God, beloved, nor the heart of those of us who are truly born again of him to not welcome others in who place their faith in Christ. First John chapter 1 verse 3 tells us, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Church, listen, true tolerance does truly show others a better way. Amen. Sadly, there are many in the church today deceived by the redefined definition of tolerance who are quick to compromise the truth. Many today are, are hearing a false gospel one without power that's causing them to remain in their sin, all under the guise of this new definition of tolerance. Church, make a decision to stand up for the gospel whenever the opportunity arises. Let's boldly proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, let me close with these words from Pastor Jack's book on page 145. Like physical strength training, growing spiritually strong doesn't happen overnight. It comes in degrees and it takes discipline. Your strength builds up every time you intentionally choose to submit to God's revealed will rather than conform to the dictates of society. 
Church, make a quality decision that you are not going to be bullied into submission by this Marxist agenda to silence the church. Refuse that package. Return to sender. You are not going to be among those that are walking in darkness. You are a child of the light. Let your light shine before men so that they can see you as a reflection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, giving glory to him. Don't be conformed by the world's redefinition of tolerance. Instead, maintain your resolve when you're challenged by your friends and family. And always, beloved, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have in your heart. But do this with gentleness and respect. Do this in the demonstration of true biblical tolerance. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for calling us together in your name to hear your word, to devour its truth. Lord, that we may be transformed by the word we hear. Lord, make us a people who stand up for truth. Make us a people bold and willing to not compromise what your word says, Lord. But give us that spirit of gentleness. We cry out for that spirit of gentleness and meekness and wisdom, Lord, to be poured out upon us so that we can deliver with accuracy and precision in the right spirit, with the right tone, with the right attitude, the words of life that have set us free. Oh, Lord, pour your spirit upon us. Rain down upon us, Holy Spirit. Oh, I just sense him right now in the studio. I pray you're sensing him in your home. Lord, wash over us. Fill us, fill us, fill us with a fresh anointing to be carriers of your truth, Lord, to be your ready witnesses to everyone who asks of the hope that is residing in us, Lord God. Give us an articulation that is laced with grace and laced with love and compassion toward all those that are yet to believe, Father. Help us reflect you on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, beloved. I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us this week as we study God's Word together. For those of you watching on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. I want to encourage those of you who haven't done so already, please join us on our official online church platform. There you can watch our weekly messages when they go live, as well as connect with our church family. Also, don't forget to check out our website at faithcc.com where you can receive additional messages and see our upcoming services. At this time, I want to thank all of you who have been supporting our church and ministry with your financial giving. Guys, you are a blessing to us. Together, we are able to fulfill our mission, which is to transform individuals and families through the gospel into empowered followers of Christ. If you would like to give now, please follow the prompts on your screen. At this time, once again, I want to thank you all for being here. And I want us all to remember, church, as we go through this week, that together we are living truth, changing lives, and loving God. God bless you.